Hi diamond painting friends, Jessica here with Tiny Worlds of Wonder. Today I'm stopping in to share my tips for tackling confetti without losing your mind. If you're like me, you love confetti heavy canvases. If you don't, you're still welcome here. <laughs> it's, everyone's welcome on Tiny Worlds of Wonder. All right, today for our tutorial, you're going to need your current work in progress. I just started my spring, well, I hope it's not gonna take me till spring, my January, February project. This is going to be my Ever Moment custom called, um, I am half, I'm half sick of shadows, I believe that's the title, by John William Waterhouse. This is a 60 by 80 custom of a public domain work that I ordered a couple months back and unboxed here on the channel. I'll stick a picture in right here so you can see what we're gonna be working on today. I'm actually gonna be taking on the lower right corner in a very small section today. Um, but if you're like me, you like to know kind of what you're seeing. So here you're seeing the black and white checkerboard floor, the tile floor, and a little bit of her gown. So nothing much to see yet, but it's, it's a work in progress. It's gonna be fun to watch it unfold. You're also gonna need a tray, your drills, your tweezers, your cover minder, your patty wax or other favorite wax. I've got pear and cedar and it smells so good. Oh my gosh. And your favorite diamond painting pen. This pen I just got in the mail from Jim's, I hope I get the name right, Jim's Custom Diamond Painting Pens on Etsy. I ordered one of his hybrid blanks. Oh my gosh, you guys. It's turquoise and copper, like sparkly copper. Mm. And then wood at the bottom. It's so cool. Oh my gosh, I'm over the moon over it. I just love it. Um, before I drop you down into the canvas, I do have to apologize for my voice today. It's super raspy. I'm catching a cold, I think. I'm fighting it off hard, really hard. Um, but I deal with a lot of little children and so things inevit inevitably come home with me. So um, I'm gonna drop you into the canvas a little closer here. If you're interested in finding out how I tackle confetti without losing my mind, stick around. That's what we're gonna be doing today. Okay guys, I have you dropped in really close to the canvas. I hope you'll be able to see okay from this angle. Now my basic procedure when I work on confetti heavy pieces, and to be honest, this is not the most confetti heavy square of diamond painting drills I've ever seen, but hopefully this will provide a good example for us. Um, my basic procedure is to work from my darkest drills to my lightest drills. Now what that does is sort of create patterns in my canvas that I find really easy to follow. So let me place some drills here, my darkest drills, and I'll kind of show you what I mean. So let's start with this kind of half filled in circle, which is 939, <clears throat> navy blue basically. Okay, and I have a group of these drills up in the corner here. We're gonna test my ability to place them straight even though I can't look, look directly down on this canvas. So I have a couple up here. Now, I'm guaranteed to miss a couple <laughs> as I go just because, you know, my eyeballs aren't gonna work that well. Okay, so I think I got them all there. What I'm gonna find, <clears throat> pardon me, is that as I go along, I'm gonna be able to work around the edges of the drills I just set because shading works in sections. So if I work with my darkest colors first, I'm gonna be able to look around the borderline of that section and basically find the next color I need. So I'm gonna to go to 3371 next, which is a really dark brown. Okay, and most of these are gonna live fairly close to where I've already set 
those dark blue drills. Okay, so I'm gonna kind of work in the same area that I did before. So the reason I like this procedure for um, working on confetti is that it makes the next symbol really easy to find. They don't just live, occasionally you have a canvas where the shading truly lives randomly everywhere, but I find that because of the way artwork works and functions and is created, that the dark sections typically live fairly close together. So this helps me find my symbols a little more easily. So now I'm gonna come up and work around this area. Now normally if I was working off camera, I would place a couple of drills up above my paper, um, just like I talked about in my six tips for square drill canvases. That helps me not get any gapping in between my squares, or helps me minimize that anyway. I can tell I'm not doing a great job in setting these straight. I'm having to look at this from a, a very awkward angle just because I have my camera where my head would normally be. These Evermoment resin drills are the bomb, you guys. Oh my goodness. Okay. See any eights? See any eights I missed? No? Okay, we'll go on. Okay, so then I'm gonna go on to the next quote unquote lighter shade, or I'm gonna follow the shade that works along the outline here. So I have a few choices here I could pick from, but I'm gonna go with the 154, the circle, because there seems to be the most of those. So, let me tell you about Evermoment drills for a second. Evermoment drills, or at least this is what Evermoment claims. Evermoment claims that their drills are truly resin, um, and there are basically a couple of different kinds of drills in the diamond painting world. Um, there are acrylic drills, which I would think would be plastic. I mean, basically they're all plastic, but Resin drills have a bit more of a glass-like finish to them, and these are so sparkly. They're just amazing. There is some trash in here for sure, but apparently, I've been looking into it, apparently that's a little more common with resin drills. They're so, so faceted. I'm just, I'm blinded by them. I'm loving them. And they're nice and square too. So my gapping is really, really minimal on this one. So you can see, since I set the darkest colors already, <clears throat> I'm sort of just filling in around the edges. I'm not having like random um, things happening up off away from my darkest colors. Because again, that's typically how shading works, right? The shaded areas are the shaded areas. I hope you guys are having a fantastic week. Like I said a minute ago, I'm fighting off a little bit of something. I was really late getting my flu shot this year. <clears throat> and man, I usually my flu shot doesn't really affect me too much, but I really felt kind of sick after I got it. <laughs> and I kind of have been catching a cold on the side, I think, after that. My boss at the law office has been sick too, so I'm sure we're trading things back and forth. Like I said, normally I'd pull back this paper, work, I'd checkerboard in just a few squares over the borderline, but just for the sake of time today, I'm not gonna do that here. That is a good trick though for avoiding gaps um, between your squares. Okay, so there's our 154. I'm gonna go now to the next 
These are all fairly dark colors, but I'm sort of working, attempting to work from darker to lighter. I'm gonna go to this window pane symbol, which is a very dark gray. And we'll work in some of those. Now you can see as I work these in that most of my colors are gonna live right along the edges of what I've already done. That's gonna make it really easy to find my next symbol. Thinking about your colors this way kind of takes away some of the randomness. Um, that can feel like is happening when you have a really confetti heavy section. You can feel like I'm losing my mind trying to find all these symbols. But if we can kind of think in patterns, it's really helpful, I think. Okay, so I'm gonna work along my outer borders looking for these. I hope you guys are enjoying your patty wax. I know a lot of you have taken the plunge into patty wax. There's no going back. <laughs> Once you fall in love with patty wax, there's no going back. But I can tell you, if you're having any trouble with patty wax, um, as far as residue or any of that goes, that's probably the thing that I read online the most. <clears throat> um, I have really, changed the way I drill and it just becomes natural after a little while but I don't have to squish drills I never did have to squish drills into place but mentally I was doing some of that and not even realizing it I find I drill with a very light hand now and I have really no problems with residue at all okay so that I think took care of all those kind of window pane symbols I am going to go into now the, I'm going to pick a symbol around the edges. I'm going to go with this M, lowercase m, which is 844, which is a brownish gray. Okay. Now some people hate confetti because it's just a lot of color changing, right? It's a lot of dumping drills back into containers, etc. But I really love confetti. I love the way it looks on my finished pieces. It gives so much nuance and depth um, to things. I really can only handle so much color blocking before I go a little bit crazy. So. Again, I'm working around the edges because that's going to help me spot my symbols. Kind of a random one here and kind of a random guy here. But for the most part, those hung right around the edges of what I was already working on. Okay. Now, just because I forgot to refill my number sign drills before we started here, I'm going to go with the X's next, and those are going to venture a little farther out into the center of my square. And I might have to pause you and go get some of those number signs. Okay, and again, these are starting to get a little more randomly placed. Most of them are hanging around the edges of what I've already done. Sorry for my long silences here today, guys. My voice is so bad that it's so raspy that I don't know how much you wanna hear me talk today. I've been told my voice is soothing, but I'm not sure it is today. <laughs> All right. Okay, I had to refill one of my containers. Hopefully I got you similarly placed. 
Um, I'm gonna go to the number sign next. Of course, my furnace had to kick on, which is really loud. If you hear anything in the background that sounds like a jet plane, that's what it is. Same little cold snap that's affecting Mrs. Coffee is affecting us, because I don't know if you guys know it, but she and I live just not that far apart by, by the standards of the uh, Midwest slash Northwest. <laughs> So I'm going to work again around the borders of what I already did, my shaded area. That's going to help me find more of what I'm looking for. And then I'm going to start, this is kind of going to be the shaded color for this area up at the top. So I'm going to start setting those in now. We're going to have some shaded light areas now. I tried to choose a square for this example that was gonna be big enough to show you quite a few color changes, but not so big that we'd be here for, you know, an hour and a half while I did the square. So hopefully I timed that right. Okay, so now I'm gonna work into the dollar sign, which kind of lives along the edges here. You guys, this new diamond painting pen is just making my whole life. I just love it. I don't know why it's so much fun to collect all the stuff that's related to a particular hobby. You know, like why half the fun is just collecting the stuff. But it really is. <laughs> I think I might have a diamond painting pen addiction now. And when I first started, I was like, oh, I don't need any of that stuff. And then Robin, Robin gifted me um, the hand-turned diamond painting pen by Sadie for our Drills and Chills event. She sent me a little Prezi. And I swear that got me addicted to diamond painting pens and how fun they can be and how pretty they can be. This is a really pretty kind of butterscotch color. I'm digging that. We've got a trashy one there I have to pull out. I think I got them all. You guys might have seen me pull out a trashy drill there in the middle. I also, just a word of caution if you're working on resin drills, I scratched the heck out of that one right there. When I was repositioning that one, I might have to grab a new one and stick it in there. All right, I'm gonna grab some of these little random ones that are kind of darkly colored. And you guys will find once you get into a canvas, of course, if you're experienced, you know, but if you're kind of new, you'll find you'll get into a canvas and not kind of not be sure what colors you're looking for. And then you kind of make friends with the colors in your canvas and you learn to recognize what symbol is sort of what color. And that makes it easier too to know what drill is sort of your next lightest color. Okay, I'm gonna grab G next. Confetti is so interesting because you find all of these different colors living 
in your square that you just did not even realize would be there. It's so fun. Oops, and I missed one. Let's see it. Let's do the stab and grab. Oops, except I grabbed a trashy one. These do have quite a bit of trash in them, I have to say. They're right, they're really nice. They're sparkly, but they're they do have more trash than I'm used to seeing in a lot of my canvases. Let's go to B. So the more you fill in, of course, the easier it is to see. couple of this kind of piggy tail symbol. There it is, 3858. Kind of a brick red. The colors in this canvas are just to die for. I'm really enjoying it so far. I'm at the stage when I'm really not sure how it's going to turn out. Do you guys ever feel like trepidation the first couple squares are like oh what color what color goes there and why is that gonna look good usually it turns out fine but all right so we're down to the last symbol here this sort of double diamond again I would normally checkerboard up here, just set a couple in there. This is not my straightest placement ever, but I've got my head way back far away. We'll see how it looks when I turn the camera off and set it up. Maybe I'll go ahead and set a couple over here so I don't get too much gapping. I'm really bad about that. Some people are not, don't have any issues with it at all. But I think I tend to work inside my squares a little bit, inside the border lines just a bit, and so I can really get gapping between my squares if I'm not careful. There we go. Now, of course, that looks like a whole bunch of nothing right now. I've seen this canvas enough to know that it's actually a black and white tile floor, um, which from a distance looks really cool. All right, I am gonna pull up and replace this one that I scratched. Let's try to grab it underneath. Pull it out, try again. There we go. All right, so again, I hope you guys have enjoyed seeing how I tackle confetti without losing my mind. My trick basically is to work from dark to light, then I can work around the edges of my shadows and it really helps in finding the next symbol quickly and easily. So, hope that was helpful to you. If you have any questions, please leave them below. I'm happy to do my best to answer them. As always, spread some joy wherever you are today, and I'll catch you next time. Bye.